Hey guys, welcome to the Short Term Show special episode series on one of my favorite markets of all time, the Texas Hill Country, hook em horns. So guys, we're gonna do a 10 episode deep dive on investing in the Texas Hill Country. And we got 10 episodes here, I just said that, but make sure you hit that subscribe button because we are gonna do a quarterly update that you don't wanna miss, you guessed it, every quarter. And we do have some supplementary materials for y'all in addition to the content on this podcast. We've got those over at our website, theshorttermshop.com. So if you wanna know anything about purchase prices of properties in these markets, or we've got all of the income data, thanks to our friends over at AirDNA. And we've got all of that for you again at theshorttermshop.com. If you guys want to buy a short-term rental with a short-term shop agent in the Texas Hill Country, email us at agents at the short-term shop.com and we will hook you up. Or if you just want to hang out with us more and talk about short-term rentals, there's a few ways you can do that. Uh, we've got a great Facebook group, same title as my book. It's called Short-Term Rental, Long-Term Wealth. Or if you want to talk to us live on Zoom, we have a call every Thursday. You can sign up for at strquestions.com and we will catch you guys over there. Hook them Longhorns. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another short-term show special episode series on the next market that I'm going to buy a short-term rental, the Texas Hill Country. And Stacy is going to help me get it. So we've got a couple folks here to help us talk about. Today, we're just talking about what to buy, what works, what doesn't work, types of property, sizes, things like that. We'll get into numbers and analysis on on later episodes. Uh, so I've got a couple people here to help me talk about this. First, I have Stacy Lancaster. Stacy, you want to introduce yourself really quick? Sure. So I am Stacy Lancaster and I am the Short Term Shops Texas Hill Country agent. I am also an investor. We have done all kinds of real estate investing from long-term rentals, fix and flips, multi small multifamilies, and now short-term rentals are my jam. <laughs> and I love, we have three short-term rentals that I self-manage remotely. Amazing. And next I have Emerald and Chris McGinnis. Hey guys, you want to introduce yourselves? Hi, we're Emerald and Chris. Chris is kind of operating as technical support back here. Um, we're a married couple, live in West Texas. Um, been short-term investing for about 10... 10 well over a year. Uh, well, we've been trying to buy properties for about 10 years. Um, right now, we have three rentals, um, uh, two in Texas, one in Florida. So that's our story. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for coming on. So this episode isn't going to be one of the longer meteor episodes. Um, we're just talking about what to buy. So I think we need to do a little refresher of areas because I think the different areas are going to have different things that work and don't work. So Stacey, do you want to give us kind of a high level overview of the areas? Sure. Yeah. So the Texas Hill Country covers a huge amount of area and there's some great spots throughout there that do really well for short-term rentals. So I would say, um, you know, kind of closer to San Antonio, you've got Canyon Lake uh, up around Austin. There's also um, some lakes up there, Marble Falls, uh, Horseshoe Bay area, which is, you know, closer to, it's a little further away from Austin, but still um, closer to Austin. And then you've also got some really charming little hill country towns like Fredericksburg, New Braunfels, Green, Wimberley, uh, places like that, that all are, all have a little bit different draw um, for clientele or guests. All right. So a lot of different areas you're either coming from or not coming from, you're either flying into San Antonio or Austin. Uh, but the, you know, we've gone over where all the different tourists come from. Lots and lots of big, big cities in the state of Texas. Uh, we've been through all that. So let's talk about what to buy. So let's start with the Fredericksburg area, because I think that's the biggest kind of buzzword area that people mm -hmm. talk about when they talk about the hill country. So what is typical there? Are we there? Are there condos? Is it single family? Is it multifamily ranches? What are we looking at typically? Being a native Texan, it's kind of funny to hear that Fredericksburg is a buzzword because it's just like, it's just interesting to us, you know, we're from here. It doesn't seem, nothing seems so special when you're from the place, but um, 
Fredericksburg, I don't know when, and you might know this better than me, but I know they, Stacey, they just passed an ordinance there um, regarding short-term rentals. So anything that was grandfathered in, um, and it's it's basically uh, typically uh, single family homes. It's kind of a small cutesy town you know, where they have, uh, you know, a uh, little restaurants where you can get bratwurst and they have uh, tons of wineries. It's kind of a bridesmaid, uh, a bridal party hotspot. Um, but I, I know they have an ordinance that just passed and I don't know how that affects the future, but I know that I, I knew a guy who last year bought a home just under the wire at a great location um, as far as its proximity to the little, you know, town square. And um, they've, they were really trying to buy it at the very last minute before this ordinance passed. So those properties that are grandfathered in are going to be in good shape because there's not going to be any more coming from what I gather. There's not a ton of hotels out there. Um, it's really vineyard country. So uh, girls like to go rent a place for typically weekend. So I think it's not super seasonal out there. It's all year round from what I gather. And it's not weeks, you know, it's not one week the way you do in Florida. It's like a weekend. Um, and I think the nightly rates are not super inflated like you see in Florida. They stay kind of steady, um, you know, maybe like 200 bucks a night or something like that. But I, I do know that ordinance has been a big deal out there lately. Yeah. And I'll speak to that just really briefly. I know we have I, I think we've got another episode on restrictions Um Coming up, but yeah, in April of last year, Fredericksburg did pass some new regulations regarding short term rentals. However, as long as the property is already permitted as a short term rental, that permit is transferable. Uh, so, the good news is there's lots of properties on the market within city limits that are um, permitted. And outside city limits, there's no restrictions, you know, unless you're in a homeowners association that you have to worry about. Um, so in town, you know, you it's kind of the quintessential little cottage, very charming. Um, you know, people are looking for something that is just has a lot of character um, mm -hmm. and is decorated really, really nice. That's what um, people going to Fredericksburg like. Yeah. But you can also have there's like there's some fantastic mid-century modern homes right now. Uh, in Fredericksburg that are killing it because they're just very unique and they're very well done. So in Fredericksburg, kind of that Instagrammable property yeah. that is just, you know, very nice kind of boutique hotel kind of feeling will do really, really well. And you can almost make any property um, do that. I, I saw a property just recently that was had stucco arches and looked very Hacienda like, and I'm not sure that one would do um so great but all, ranch houses um yeah to cottages ranch houses do really for sure. great yeah. uh, tracy do you think that pools and hot tubs are uh, i mean stacy i'm sorry stacy do you think pools and hot tubs are about like do you need those out there because i i've talked to a lot of friends and we're still not sure yeah, the hot tubs are pretty standard for most um properties that are short-term rented People love it, even though it's hot in Texas. I think in the summertime they use them as swimming pools. And so yes, we do. It, it's pretty standard and, and it's kind of expected. Pools, I always tell people pools are a bonus. If you can get a property with a pool, you know, you're definitely going to um, net more because of it. But it's not, you're not going to not rent if you don't have a pool, um, but you can demand a higher price if you do have a pool. Okay. Um, I, I think um, most everybody I know around here, it's usually uh, women's vineyard trips. And so I think the bedroom count is important, too. Um, I think you got to have I mean, I think a one bedroom honeymoon cottage uh, does well uh, from what I gather. Um, so Texas everywhere, everywhere you go is five hours. So um, I think what I've noticed is one bedrooms do really well in anywhere in Texas, but also so you but then there's the three bedroom niche. And so most of the people I know who are going to Fredericksburg are going for a girl's trip. And so they want like three bedrooms. Uh, is that kind of been your experience? Yeah. Fredericksburg is one of the, you know, unique markets where one and two bedrooms do really well. However, the price point difference on a one and two bedroom or I should say the price increase on a three plus bedroom is not as significant as you might think it is. So mm -hmm. if you can afford the bigger property, I would say go with the bigger property because obviously that's going to give you the best return. Um, you're right. There's not as many like four and five bedrooms. So if you can go to that size, 
you're going to kill it because most people who are coming, like you said, are splitting the cost of the trip. And so uh, even if your nightly rate is really high, you know, split five or 10 ways, um, it's not that expensive for people to come. Uh, I I do think you're right about the Instagramable uh, thing about Fredericksburg because um, I have a coworker, like I said, they just bought Under the Wire last year. And that's what they've focused on. When I, I looked at his property with him and he said, well, what would you do? And I said, it's all about the pictures uh, at the beginning. And uh, it, it's a, they, I think it was a three bedroom, one bath with potential for uh, another bathroom, and, but it had a great courtyard. And so I said, if it's me, I'm stringing lights across that courtyard and uh, just making it look like a cozy, fun girl party place, kind of. Um, and so I, I think a lot of times having uh, the female amenities in mind, which is, you know, the makeup wipes and the wine glasses and, and things like that. Uh, I don't know. I don't think so much board games, um, but they didn't have a pool. But I said I would do the hot tub. Um, but like I said, you know, girls want to take cute pictures. So do. And they've they've been it's been pretty solidly booked since then. Um, but yeah, they, they kind of ran into that same issue you mentioned where he was like, um, you know, I'm using price labs like you recommended, but I'm noticing the nightly rates are not that different, um, between you know, my three bedroom and, uh, you know, a two bedroom. Um, and so I guess that's just the nature of Fredericksburg is what it sounds like. I, now I would say it depends, um, on the property. So three bedrooms going to definitely command more, um, just cause you can sleep more, yeah. um, and the um and just to I want to make sure people understand that so yes, there are a lot of girls' trips. That's a big, big draw for Fredericksburg. But I don't want people to get the idea that they're crazy bachelorette parties. No, 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 no. Yeah, These are uh, upwardly <laughs> mobile professionals. Um, so yeah. we live in Midland, Texas. Um, in Midland, Texas, if anybody's familiar, is kind of an oil and gas hub. Uh between us and Odessa is around what, Chris, two hundred thousand people. Uh, around 300,000 people. So the tentacles of Midland stretch everywhere. I'm sure you already know that. But um, so if you go to Rio Dosa in New Mexico, or you stretch out to anywhere in the hill country, um, it's going to be those upperly mobile professionals hitting all those places who have uh, lots of extra cash and they just want to get out of the desert. Um, a lot of people have planes and they fly over there, but Fredericksburg is just in that sweet spot of under five hours. Um, and I think for most people in West Texas um, who can afford to take trips, uh, under five hours is super drivable. Um, so Fredericksburg is being driven. Austin is being driven. Uh, San Antonio is being driven. Uh, typically, you only fly to Houston. Uh, you know, most of Texas is considered drivable. So, uh, you, yeah, it is, it's upwardly mobile parties, and it's a lot of weddings. Um, it's just... Uh, it's, it's always been a place to visit since I was a kid, but I don't know the past few years, I guess during COVID is when it really became the work from home, rent a place, stay there. And I guess it's just kind of kept that momentum from what I've gathered. All right, let's talk about a few of the other areas of the Hill Country because we have limited time, although Fredericksburg is wonderful. Um, so let's talk about some of the other popular areas. So Canyon Lake is a pretty popular area. Do we need to be, is it worth bothering with buying something in that area if it's not on the lake or have like direct access somehow? So that's a great question. Very few properties on Can- in Canyon Lake are on the lake. Um, it, it's a humongous lake that was built by the Texas um, Army Corps of Engineers. But because of the way it was built, there's like really high, you know, banks, I guess, on most of the lake. So there's very few properties that are actually on the lake. If you can find one on the lake, that's a score because there's, they're few and far between. Um, So most people who are going to Canyon Lake are not expecting to stay on the lake. You know, if if you're drivable, you know, within a um, couple minutes drive to the lake, then that should do really well for you. Um, And on the lake properties, the great news with Canyon Lake is there's very few like Instagrammable type properties, it's easy to set the bar. Like if you have a nice property, it should do well in Canyon Lake because the competition is not very stiff. Okay. So you're saying that Canyon Lake would probably be like what I would classify as more of an emerging market where it's not already like full of really sophisticated managers who are doing all this crazy decor. So right. Okay. So that might be an area where if you don't have a budget to do 
a lot of updating or anything like right off the bat, that might be a really good place to start. Yeah, for sure. Um, the price point in Canyon Lake is probably one of the um, lowest in the Texas Hill Country. And the now you, there aren't very many turnkey properties. You know, a lot of them have grandma's hand-me-down furniture in them. So you're probably going to want to, you know, put some personal touches and decor into it. But you can get some good deals in Canyon Lake. Okay, great. And are again, are there are we talking mostly single family or are there condos in this market? Mostly single family. Mostly single family. Okay. There are a few condos in Canyon Lake, but not a ton. Okay. And one more little area I want to hit on before we move north, the whole kind of outside San Marcos and New Braunfels, like Blanco, Wimberley, that whole little area of the hill country where there's a lot of rivers. Uh, again, do we need to be waterfront or can we just be remote? What are we looking for there? Um, you can be remote. It, being waterfront, obviously, you're going to be able to command a higher price point. So if you can find something you know, on the water in your budget, that's definitely going to be a bonus and a, a big increase uh, in your revenue. But being close to the water is will rent just fine as well. All right. And is there anything specific about size, which again, with the size, we're going to get into that a little deeper in the numbers episode, which I think is the next episode. Um, but offhand, is there anything, or are these typically smaller houses that do well, larger houses or kind of that medium three bedroom range? Yeah, I would say in these markets as well, four to five bedrooms as yeah. far as rentability are not super common. So you don't have a lot of competition uh, at the four and five bedroom level. So they tend to do really, really well. Um, three bedrooms, typically in a lake market, I'll say try to find a three bedroom plus because you've often got, you know, families mm -hmm. or, you know, families with grandparents and things coming or multiple families sharing a place. Um, so three bedrooms is probably where you'd want to, the minimum you'd want to, um, be at if possible. I agree with that, Avery. I think, um, it's a lot like the beach area where it's people all pitching in and the bigger, the better. And there isn't a lot of that. So that's how, for my family in particular, we're pretty big. That's very difficult to find, especially even just being kind of close ish to the water. Um, so if you can find a big one, I've, I've noticed when I'm looking, uh, the ones that really have caught my eye are the ones, um, that are kind of close to those river properties, but maybe they have a, a water slide, a pool with the water slide or something cool. Um, because it is kind of hard to get to the water a lot of times out here. So if there's something additional at the house, like a pool, um, that's always something that I've, that is kind of a, um, a value add because it's saving you money from going to the water park, things like that. That's at least those, that's what my family considers when we're going out there, you know, that Schlitterbahn, New Braunfels area. Oh uh, yes. Schlitterbahn. <laughs> Schlitter, old Schlitterbahn. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all Schlitterbahn is a really big water park for those who aren't familiar. So yeah, that's <laughs> definitely an attraction down there. So, um, and, and it's in the middle of a neighborhood. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> it is. It's kind of random. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's head north a little bit and talk about the Marble Falls, Horseshoe Bay is another word you'll probably hear a lot. All of this stuff is really more of like not suburbs of Austin, but further out, like just past all the suburbs of Austin out there mm -hmm. in the hill country. So what are we looking for in those further north areas of the hill country? And I would say kind of the same thing, um, a bigger if you can afford a bigger property, it's going to do uh, really well. Three bedrooms minimum. Um, not that a one or two bedroom won't do well, but the guest market is smaller for that. And the price point is not that much less expensive um, for the smaller properties. So, um, you know, if you can get in at a three bedroom plus, you're going to do well. So uh, Marble Fall Falls is where our properties are. Um, and I'm kind of interested, Stacey, to hear what you think about Marble Falls per se, because everybody says Lake LBJ, um, but LB, you know, LBJ is Horseshoe Bay, um, Sunrise Beach, Granite Shoals, um, where we're at, which is called Highland Haven. Um, there's Kingsland. And every one of these 
areas is so unique uh, as far as the demographics. And it is a small area. So that's interesting. The demographics are very widespread. Um, I think Rex Tillerson, you know, the ex Secretary of Defense and Exxon CEO has got a house on LBJ across the water. You might have, you know, totally different socioeconomic thing going on um, and the restrictions very wildly as well. Um, but um, I, I'm interested in what you think about Marble Falls in particular, because Marble Falls is kind of the city that uh, where all the teachers work, the doctors, the nurses, um, that, you know, you're just regular uh, people um, where the school is, things like that. Um, and I've been I've been thinking for years that Marble Falls was going to break loose and be the next big thing because it is so close. Um, you jump on the highway and you can go, you know, either way. I call it left or right. It's probably like north or south or something, but you can be in Austin in an hour. Um, and so Chris and I just haven't had the experience that Marble Falls proper has exploded the way we thought it was. So I'm really interested to know what you think about Marble Falls. Yeah, I would consider Marble Falls kind of an emerging market uh, and not just Marble Falls, but like the Burnett area and kind of the the whole area around there. Um, I do think, you know, that people are going out that way more as they're trying to get away from crazy Austin traffic mm -hmm. and things like that and and getting a little bit more remote getaway. Um, so, yeah, that's interesting. That's an interesting um experience um, that you've had well and so spicewood is i think already emerged and so spicewood is 30 minutes from marble falls so uh, i keep thinking it's going to inch closer to us and it hasn't quite hit yet um but uh, if you're talking uh, avery if you're talking what people want on the lake um the lake is interesting i mean everybody in texas goes to lbj for you know maybe they go to possum kingdom up in dallas area but in general lbj is a summer spring break hot spot um and the rentals are a little tough because a lot of the beach i mean the uh, lake communities do not allow short-term rentals um and so i think it's not so much what works or what doesn't work it's where can you do short-term rentals which horseshoe bay allows short-term rentals um, but that's a little prohibitive because it's owned um, by a lot of people who don't rent their properties out. Um, but there is um, a lot. I still think I see properties pop up in Horseshoe Bay. They're very interesting um, at decent price points. Um, and they rent, I think, all year round. Um, they've got the yacht club there that has a program you can participate in. Um, don't really know how you can make money when you do that. I've looked into it a lot. Um, there's properties that are if they're in a one mile radius of that yacht club, you can you can kind of piggyback on a membership and let your guests use it. Problem is, it's just so expensive. It just doesn't it doesn't the math doesn't work uh, for us. But they have a lot of um, there's not really condos per se, but but properties that look like condos in Horseshoe Bay. Um, they are kind of 80s style uh, duplexes and townhomes, um, and then. Um, Kingsland is uh, un a town that is unincorporated. That town, um, all single family homes, and it is a it is unincorporated. So it is a true mix of mansions and you know smaller places. But Kingsland, I think, is a really interesting area uh, because if you can get a spot out there at a good price, they've got great waterfront, and I think Kingsland rents really well. Um, and, and this and the lots are large, um, so. Uh, there's a couple other places in there where that allow short-term rentals, a couple that don't. Granite Shoals does not. Um, and, but uh, I think Sunrise Beach, Kingsland, and Horseshoe Bay all uh, allow short-term and all rent really well. I have a question for you, Texans. So in my own just uneducated cruising of Zillow, which is very annoying. Sorry, Stacey, I should just ask you, but sometimes I'm just cruising Zillow. Um, what about... Kerrville, because I've noticed that I know nothing about it. Um, the prices seem to be cheaper there. There are some, and I've not looked into any regulations whatsoever. Properties are a little cheaper. You can find some things on the river out that direction. Um, and I'm just kind of wondering why it's affordable. Do people go there? Maybe they don't. Yeah, there. So Kerrville, I would consider Kerrville kind of an emerging market also. So Kerrville is 
one of the hilliest of the hill country um, cities. There's, I don't know if it's the Colorado River that runs through there. So there is a river and there's a lot of camps, um, you know, like summer camps and stuff that are stationed in that area. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's, there's some good there's definitely some good outdoor things to do. There's very few, um, if any restrictions in Kerrville. So it's a good market. It's, and there's not a ton of competition because there's not a lot of other short-term rentals, um, you know, that are really doing this as a business. Um, so Stacy, do you think Kerrville's kind of a commuter town, uh, for people who commute to, I want to say San Antonio, but maybe that's too far away. Not really. I think most people who are, live in Kerrville work nearby. Work in Kerrville. Um, um, yeah, like a lot of the people who service people for like Fredericksburg or Comfort, little areas like that are coming from Kerrville. Okay. I, I do know Kerrville is gorgeous and I've had several friends who say that's where they want to retire and they want to live. Um, I think that the tough part about Texas in some ways is we're so large that the areas that, that are closer to a hub like San Antonio or Austin – just tend to do better because uh, even for Texans, we don't know all the areas here. Um, and so I think there's definitely opportunity in a place like Kerrville to create something. Uh, but I do, there are a lot of camps there. Um, but um, what I've noticed is in in um, the pretty parts of Texas, one thing kind of starts and everything follows. So um, there's a lot of pretty places and I, I agree Kerrville is one of them. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I just had a little interest there. It's beautiful. And- Yeah. And I know, and we're going to talk about this more in another episode to wedding venues and like, okay, well, let me back up. Unique stays seem to be more common in the hill country and work better than other markets that I've seen. And what I mean by unique stays is not like terribly unique, but (laughs) like where I've seen people try to do tiny home communities and other markets and like couldn't get through the red tape. I've seen it be successful here. Uh, I've seen a lot of people try to open wedding venues or do wedding venue type things in barns and stuff in other markets and not be able to get it done. And then it can be done here. So you don't have to. What I've noticed uh, is that you don't necessarily have to buy a raw piece of land and put that together. I've seen quite a few listings of people selling, you know, an entire little tiny home community mm-hmm. or unique stay. So I think that's pretty interesting because they do seem to work well. And then you also don't have to start from scratch, which is the reason, the main reason why I tell people it's probably not going to be worth doing because starting from scratch is a lot of red tape. There's a lot of stuff you have to get through, but I've seen, you know, a number of unique stays for sale here and there, which I think is really interesting because you don't really see that in other markets. So if you want to be creative, you can without having to start from scratch. Yes, I yeah. think um, I think in, um, you're right. in, in Horseshoe Bay. There is an Airbnb that I've noticed off of the road, and I don't know what what road is your bank on, Chris? Seventy one. Twenty one forty seven. Twenty one forty seven. There is a. It's almost like a TP slash container Airbnb thing, and I I think what happens out here is that um, uh, it's a little like uh, I don't know, uh, I don't know which neighborhood which which oh Canyon Lake where there's. Uh, not a lot of competition and the pictures aren't that impressive. I think what happens out here is people started doing these unique stays so that the Instagrammable feature is there because unless you're directly on the water, sometimes it is a little difficult to differentiate yourself. And um, I I do think um, in Texas, um, people just want to go stay at cool places uh, because uh, it's kind of hard to, if you're out in a lot of parts of Texas, there's not a lot of that, you know, um, there's a lot of Texas that isn't Houston, Austin, or San Antonio, and, and people want to go to those cool places. So um, I, I, I think that's why they work here. And I think most of our towns are pretty business friendly. Um, so you can kind of do stuff like that, like, you know, RV parks, things like that. You can you can kind of get creative and, and you're right. Some of those are listed. Yeah. And in Fredericksburg, like we've got a couple on the market right now that, you know, well, there's an off-market property that is like four tiny homes that is spectacular and you know it would it would be very difficult to build something like that today you know in the proximity to to the main street um so there's definitely opportunities and Fredericksburg is very common to have houses that also have uh guest houses um that come with the property so you can pick up properties pretty regularly that have multiple um dwellings on them 
And just keep in mind, guys, that if you do come across a deal like that, you're going to have to use a local commercial bank. You're not going to be able to conventionally finance that. And I don't know about DSCR. We can talk about that in the financing. Yeah. Yeah. I have had a couple be successful that just had like an 80, you know, what they called it an ADU and were able to get conventional lending. But if it's, I think it's three or more. Yeah. You definitely got to go commercial or do like 25% down. Gotcha. Yeah. And it, yeah, it will be 25% down and, and commercial probably. Um, so what else, what else? So I guess what I'm hearing is typically the type of property that works is going to be a single family or a collection of single families. There's not a lot of condos. There's doesn't sound like there's any multifamily. Not much. Not really. Not much. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you're looking for single family waterfront. If you can get it, doesn't have to be, you know, views if you can get them. It helps to have a hot tub, helps to have a pool. It helps a lot to have a pool in any market, by the way. Um, all right. And we're going to dig into the data of all of the whys of this here on the next episode. So is there anything else in terms of what works and doesn't work and types of properties that you would tell potential listeners to be looking at or looking for? Uh, in this market, in any part of the hill country, because it is a big area. Yeah, I would just say like you can make almost any property work in the hill country um, as long as you have a, a vision and design it well. Um, you know, you can take the ugliest little house that you can find and make it spectacular. Um, now, again, like a hacienda or something uh, very architectural um property that does not seem to fit in the Hill country may not may not do um great but um almost everything ranch houses you know farms yeah far farms do phenomenal mm -hmm. um cottages kill it um so there's a lot of it's wide open pretty much um in the Texas Hill country I, I agree with that. It's almost hard to to say, oh, do this or this, because I think almost anything would work. I think um, if you want to kind of play it safe, you know, check around Airbnb and see where somebody's already doing something. And if it's like, uh, like, like Stacey was saying, emerging, um, make your property as attractive as possible um, and set it up so that it's going to get awesome reviews. And you're probably going to do fine. Um, it's not like other areas where you have to be within this inner loop or something like that. I mean, it's, it's Hill Country is pretty, oh, it's pretty fair game, even in the, the markets that are not emerging um, or even the markets that you think, oh, that should be emerging. Um, you're probably still going to do okay um, on, on your economics. You know, you may not do the same as if you're in Austin proper, but you're probably still going to do okay. All right. So the Hill Country is sort of a blue ocean of opportunity if you buy the right area, the right property and um, decorate it well and market it well. So guys, if you want to buy one of those properties with the short term shop with Stacy, you can email us at agents at the short term shop dot com. Or if you have any further questions, you can join our Facebook group called Short Term Rental Long Term Wealth, same as my book or we have open office hours every Thursday on Zoom. You can sign up for those at strquestions.com. Thanks, guys.